Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So if you've been following this project, you've seen we've done some pretty cool stuff, uh, made some new parts. Last week's video, we made that shaft for the dragline crane and that goes in the track rollers down here um, to support the track and support the machine. Um, now we need to make the bushings and I made bushings a while back for different components out of Nylatron. This is a plastic material that's very similar in strength to bronze. Um, and we made those to replace these bronze bushings that were completely wore out. So let's get this figured out and start making, uh, what, you know, figure out the sizes we need and start making new bushings to go with our new shafts. All right, so if you saw last week's video, we made these new shafts and we did the slab milling. Um, and then if you watch the follow-up video that came out on Wednesday, I took that full depth of cut and it went so much better, so much faster. I actually had these parts down to five minutes a piece to do the milling, which is pretty awesome. Uh, instead of taking slow cuts and smaller cuts, I could just hog the whole thing off. So it worked out great. Now what we need to do is measure our bore and we're just gonna do that with the caliper because we don't need this perfect. And it looks like two and three eighths. And I'm just gonna reach down in, get feel the bottom of where that bearing bore is. And it looks like about two and an eighth inch. So we'll actually make these bearings, bushings two and a quarter long, push them in flush, and then they'll be just inset a little bit. Um, and then obviously we need a two inch bore. So we're actually gonna make that bushing oversized so it's a press fit, but we have to make the internal diameter oversized also so that when it presses in and squeezes, we don't pinch our and lock up on our shaft. So the material we're using is Nylatron tubing. This is a Nylatron GSM, uh, two inch by two and a half. Um, and it's, it's perfect for what we're doing. You just take off some of the outside, take bore out some of the inside, cut it off and you're done. That's easy as that. So let's get it in the lathe and let's knock out the first bushing, test fit it, make sure it's all okay, and then we'll knock out the rest. All right, so we're gonna start at 710 RPM. We're just gonna take a facing cut, smooth out that end. And You've probably seen me do other videos with this stuff. I absolutely love this material. It is so easy to work with. And then I'm gonna take and touch off and just figure out, we're gonna take a, about 60, we'll take 65 thousandths to start with and just see where we are. Now carbide does work good with this, but high speed steel sharpened properly would probably be better, but it sure does cut nice. Let's just take a quick peek where we're at. 2530. So this stuff was almost 100 thou oversized on the OD, which is just fine, nothing wrong with that. And we need to go to, let's go to 2380. We'll leave a five thou press fit for this, um, which will be perfect. So we need to take another, uh, 155 and we're going to try that in one shot all right let's see how it does with 155 thou much better all right let's see how we did right on the money 2380, 2379. So that's perfect. That'll work great for this bushing. And then uh, we'll go ahead and bore it out. We're gonna go, we're gonna go 10 over to, uh, that way when it compresses, actually I think I'm gonna go 12 over just to be safe. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and knock this burr off quick and just see what we got for a bore. And it's just a regular deburring tool. And we're about a hundred thou undersize, perfect. All right, so I'm not using anything too special here, just a small boring bar with a tool bit that I ground, um, just a wide radius on it. I'll touch that off. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take about 40 thou to start with. about 940, 945 right there. So at least 65 more to go. All right, let's give this a try. see what we got. Yeah, I needed another, at least another five on that. So we'll take that and then I'll write down where I was at for numbers. And then uh, the next time I do the, the next one, I'll be able to do it the full depth with no problem. Um, Cause there's really no tool deflection with this stuff. I decided I wanted to be just a little more than that. Um, so I went to 215. That'll give me roughly when it crushes down, it should give me five to 10 thousandths of clearance, which should be perfect for this. Now I'll go ahead and uh, cut it off, deburr it and test fit it. All right, so just lining up the edge of the cutter with the edge of the part. I'm, nothing about this needs to be too precision. And then we'll go ahead and cut her right off. Just like that. All right, just a quick deeper. And there it is. Now we'll go test fit it and see if it works. All right, first just see if, if it'll start. And that'll tell us if we need to go a little bit bigger. And it does start. I might be able to push that in all the way by hand, but maybe not. Um, we'll go back to the Arbor Press, push it in the rest of the way, and then see if it, uh, see what we need to do. All right, let's just stick our shaft in there and see that it fits yet. And that actually fits pretty nice. A little bit of slop, which is what I wanted. Let me grab the caliper and we'll see how much that compressed. Yeah, we compressed about, about three thousandths, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and make my OD just a few thousandths bigger on the next one. Um, this one will be just fine. This won't be a problem, but we'll make it a little bigger on the next one and then keep the ID right where it is, and then we should have a nice snug fit.
All right, let's see if that cured it. Yeah, a little snugger fit. I'll take it back to the press, get it in, and we'll see how the shaft fits. All right, that went in a lot better. Let's just measure it and see where we're at. Boy, we're uh, maybe three thousandths over by the caliper. Let's see how the shaft fits. Well, it fits, it fits tight, but it fits good. Um, it'll still roll on there. Let's run it all the way through. Boy, that's actually a nice fit. But I think I'm gonna just oversize that bore just a touch more. I'm gonna stay with that size on the OD and uh, we should be good. So two down, 30 to go. All right, what you just saw right there was one of the problems with Nylatron, and it's the chip building up and getting stuck and then grinding into the material. And yeah, I got a mess here, but it, uh, it just grinds into the material. So it makes a real mess. Um, I think this one might be salvageable if I just take more off of it, but we'll have to fix that. All right, so one thing that's gonna help me with this problem is extending my boring bar out a little further, giving myself some more distance for, for buildup. Um, sucks, but now I have to reset my inside dimension, but that's not a big deal. All right, so first I'm just gonna clean up this end, take it in a little further, and then we'll bore, start boring it again and see if we can salvage this guy. This one might be okay. A little oversized, but we should be oversized on our OD. Yep, so that might be okay. We'll, we'll try it. Worst case, I press it out and start over. All right, I just pressed it in and let's just that's a little bit of slop, but that's not bad. That's, that's exactly what we need. You want a little give in them so that they'll roll good. So that's perfect. Now we'll get, I'll get the other side done and then I think we'll end the video.
All right, I just pressed it in. Let's see how we did. Oh, very nice. Very nice fit. Yeah, that's, that's about perfect. Couldn't ask for better there. So, now I just got 28 to go. Well, I've got a little bit of work ahead of me. This, these don't take long, they really do go quick. Uh, the tool wear is minimal, um, if at all, and you can just fly through these things. Um, you run a pretty aggressive feed, the chip comes out, or the, the, <laughs> the coil, or the string, however you wanna look at it, comes out pretty good. Um, clean, you know, binding up is a problem, but stay, you know, stay focused, keep a distance between your tool and your tool holder on the bores so there's room for clearance and things like that. Um, and you're usually fine. Uh, sometimes on a bore like that, I'll take the air hose and I'll blow it and I'll force it out the other end of the headstock and that really helps too. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up, get this thing done so we can maybe get the tracks back on this year. I'm really hoping we can get to that point um, before the snow flies, um, but I'm running out of time here. So with that, until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.